time to do the job. Time to do the job! Behold the jobber of jobbers. Daniel. Daniel Jobber. <laughs> What's up, everybody? This is Edmonton area's own D-Job, Danimal, Daniel Jobber here. I hope you'll take the time to job out with me as I preview NXT TakeOver Chicago and WWE Backlash this weekend. Yes, this is my jobbing out with Danimal, Daniel Jobber's WWE Backlash preview and prediction show. This is a SmackDown Live exclusive pay-per-view this weekend, and it features Alberta's own Jinder Mahal getting his shot at Randy Orton's WWE Championship in the Backlash main event. So that's uh, going to be the highlight for us Albertans here. Anyways, this comes to you courtesy of the Edmonton Sports Podcast Network. So sit tight, and let's job out for a while. So first off, we have NXT TakeOver on Saturday night on the WWE Network, which, by the way, if you... You can have for $11.99 per month on any Canadian TV subscription. If you happen to be American, you can get it for $9.99 a month, and you get your first month free, meaning you get Backlash and the Raw pay-per-view Extreme Rules in a couple of weeks for free if you sign up now. So just for any American people who happen to catch in from this south of the border. Anyways, we're going to start by previewing the matches for NXT TakeOver. Uh, first off, this is a speculation match of mine. It hasn't been announced yet, but I was kind of hinted in, in a segment on NXT last week. There's possibly Drew McIntyre versus Cassius. Oh, no. So uh, if this happens, uh, I predict Drew McIntyre will come out victorious here because he's really hyped as being one of the uh, one of the surging new performers or resurging performers in WWE. And he's supposed to be uh, you know, one who's a up-and-coming star again, I guess, the best way to put it. So uh, I expect uh, that Ka- that, that uh, Drew McIntyre would come out victorious. Although Cassius Ono, uh, I mean, at his age, he's been you know, one of the few guys uh, being a little bit of a bright spot in NXT, but he hasn't really been on TV a lot in the last couple of weeks. So I think uh, the Drew McIntyre hype is probably going to be the, uh, the difference there. So anyways, we then have the UK Championship uh, being being fought at NXT. Tyler Bate to the... Uh, the UK champion of WWE, taking on Pete Dunne. I don't really know a lot about these guys, so it's a, it's a tough prediction for me, but uh, I don't know, it seems like Tyler Bate really, I mean, he's been a good representative of the of the UK title and the brand, but really there's nothing overly exciting or, or hasn't generated a lot of hype. So, And Pete Dunne is supposed to be a real fan favorite. You know, so I'm, I'm thinking there might be a title change here to shake things up a little bit and get people, you know, excited about the UK Championship division. So, yeah, I'm picking... If I have to pick anybody, I'll pick Pete Dunne. And, of course, I, it's a preview prediction show. i got to pick somebody. So, yes, I'm going to go with Pete Dunne in this one. <laughs> Anyways, then, anyway, of course, the matches that um, are truly NXT, I guess, if you want to put it that way, we have the NXT Tag Team Champions, the Authors of Pain versus DIY, Gargano and Ciampa in a... Ladder match for the Tag Team Championships of NXT. It's going to be tr- intriguing, man, because both of these teams are, I mean, exceptional. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, it's a tough one to predict, but generally when it comes to NXT, uh, when you have the top stars at the top of their game like this, it often comes down to who's the most likely one to be on the main roster next. And I'm really thinking DIY is probably the most likely to go to the main roster because they're primed and ready. And so I could see them losing this match uh, in a really good match. I'm not sure how they're going to lose it because they're probably going to be the fan favorites and you think they'll be able to climb a ladder. But I think DIY is probably the most likely going to be on the main roster soon. Although, I mean, the Authors of Pain would just be awesome when they go to the main roster. I mean, if they can find a, a way to keep their momentum going as this uh, monster tag team. And, of course, it's Paul Ellering if they bring him up as well. Wow, this would be great. But uh, I don't think it's time, I think... Really, I think the Authors of Pain have been the real carrying factor in the tag team division of NXT. And I I, I really think they're going to retain here against John, uh, DIY. 
And like I said, I see DIY making a soon trip to the main roster. So this, this actually could be their last match in NXT. Uh, I mean, I guess we'll see how their reaction is after, but the fans could be saying, thank you, DIY, at the end of it. So we'll see what happens there. Then we have the NXT Women's Championship. It is a triple threat match. We're having the NXT champion, the monster Asuka, totally undefeated, has more consecutive wins than anybody, including uh, Goldberg and his undefeated streak. Just been totally tearing up the NXT and really the wrestling world. I mean, because like I said, she hasn't lost a match. And then uh, she came over to the WWE to be part of NXT. And yeah, she's everything you could ask in a, in a women's champion. And she's taking on... The new Ruby Riot, who's kind of been a newcomer, uh, kind of being a, ca- a female, or I mean a female, uh, a babyface counterpart to Nikki Cross of, uh, of Sanity, who was the, basically they're, they're both kind of outlandish, kind of crazy, psycho women, if you want to put it that way, and they're both very entertaining to watch and exciting to see, and they're going to be taking on Asuka in a triple threat really comes down to whether Oscar's heading to the main roster soon. Um, it could happen. It's hard, really hard to say, you know. Um, she would be awesome when she goes to the main roster. There's probably a spot on Raw for her because Raw's women's division lost a lot when Charlotte left. Although, of course, um, you don't really lose too much when you have when you have Alexa Bliss but as champion. But, but yeah, there's probably room for Oscar there. SmackDown could probably even find a spot for her. Although Charlotte uh, just coming to SmackDown Live might have something to say about that. But but I don't know. I think it might be too early. There still isn't enough strong women able to carry the title. And with um, Ember Moon getting hurt, I uh, I don't think that uh, they're going to have a title change. Ember Moon might have been potential for that. But really, I think they should let Asuka hang on to the Women's Championship till the SummerSlam NXT TakeOver and maybe have her drop it there. Because really, they need to build her cockiness uh, reign her almost becoming a, a heel maybe not necessarily a heel but getting cockier and cockier like you can't beat me I'm unbeatable I'm the greatest which will slowly make her look like a heel anyways and then have her you know her cockiness be her undoing and what leads her on to the main roster um, and I don't think they've built that enough yet I think they probably need to keep building that and have her lose the title at the SummerSlam NXT TakeOver maybe after that you could have her debut on the main roster and plan to have a rematch at the next pay-per-view and then that would be the end of her NXT time with the thank you Asuka stuff but yeah I don't think this is the time I think Asuka retains over Ruby Wyatt and Nikki Cross that's that's what I expect to happen so and finally we have the NXT championship the glorious glorious Bobby Roode the champion versus the finally returning from injury Hideo Itami! And this, it's a long-awaited chance for Itami to finally get another chance to prove himself, because really, he's been hurt for the better part of two years, pretty much since he had that really exciting victory in a tournament before, what was it, WrestleMania 31, that put him in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, the one won by the big show in WrestleMania 31. Um, pretty sure it was 31, anyway, yeah, it was 31. And he's been pretty much hurt since then, and, and it's sad, two injury runs. So it's good to finally see him getting back in the NXT and getting a title shot so quickly. I don't think he's going to beat uh, Bobby Roode. I mean, it'd be great if Bobby Roode had, you know, they had a plan for him on the main roster. I don't think they have that, and even if they did, I think Hideo Itami needs to really needs to reestablish himself, prove himself that he's able to stay healthy for a period of time and, and not get hurt, and putting in the title on him in his first big match back, I think is, that would be a mistake. So, I mean, I predict the glorious Bobby Roode to hang on to the title, at, once again, at least until the SummerSlam and actually take over, and who knows, maybe beyond. Because there really isn't anybody like Bobby Roode right now that that's really ready to to just take the division by storm, not since Shinsuke Nakamura left for this first SmackDown. So, so, yeah, I predict Bobby Roode to retain, too. Anyways, with this NXT TakeOver, uh, Saturday night, if you get a chance... Catch it, man. NXT TakeOver are always awesome shows. Really worth the time to watch. Yeah, they're just just really good shows. I don't think I've seen very many, if any, bad NXT TakeOvers. But I've been really watching NXT. So, yeah, check it out. Treat yourself. Some of the best wrestling you're going to see. And uh, even if, if some of it's a little more predictable, maybe than some of the WWE stuff. Although, WWE's been awfully predictable lately, too. Um, still great wrestling. Great shows. You get to see these guys in the 
really putting on the, everything, everything they can do, leaving them in the ring because they're trying to prove that they're ready to be true WWE superstars for the main roster. So, yeah, it'd be a great show. I know it will. Check it out if you can. So anyways, to the main show, Backlash, WWE's Backlash, the SmackDown exclusive pay-per-view, Sunday on the WWE Network, is, uh, well, I'm looking forward to it now more than ever, now that I've had a chance to see the main card for it and see, you know, who's on it. There are some pretty good matches. Uh, first off, we have a pre-show match, the Perfect Ten, Ty Dillinger, ten, 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 versus Aiden English. Recently split from uh, Simon Gotch. They were the VOD villains. Simon Gotch was actually released from the WWE to give Aiden English this uh, solo run. Aiden English is kind of entertaining. He'll probably sing us a song with his classical trained acting voice. And, and he'll job out to the perfect ten. And Ty Dillinger deserves a pay-per-view win. He used to lose so many pay-per-view matches at NXT. He deserves a good win, finally. And this is his chance, I think, to... You know, put on a good show. I'm sure Aiden English will give him a fight, but Perfect Ten, Ty Dillinger is going to show people what he can do and get a big, easy victory in the, in the, in the pre-show. Pre-show match is usually very predictable. Usually they go to the baby face unless the heel is, is, uh, you know, highly touted. And, and of course Aiden English is really very much, uh, you know, patterned after my heart. A jobber! So. Yes, Perfect Ten, Ty Dillinger in the pre-show match. Then we have the main card and, First off, there's a six-woman tag team match, which could almost have been on the pre-show if it wasn't for the fact that there is no other women's matches on the card. And it's the it's SmackDown with live women's champion, uh, Naomi, in this match. And she's not defending the title, so really, I mean, you got to put it on the main card because it's all the women have in the show, and it's the only chance to see the uh, the SmackDown live women's champion. So, anyways, it's uh, the, the baby faces, uh, Naomi, the SmackDown live champion, as I mentioned, Becky Lynch. And, of course, Charlotte Flair, newly uh, arrived at SmackDown with the Superstar Shake-Up. And it's her first chance in a pay-per-view to really show off, uh, you know, why she's one of the greatest wrestlers, women wrestlers in the world. And they're going to be facing the Welcome Committee. More like the Welcome Comedy, as far as I'm concerned. But, but you got to give them some credit there. They're doing their best. And, of course, it's Calgary's Natalia Neidhart, the uh, daughter of Jim Neidhart. And, of course, the, uh, the awesome niece of Bret Hart of the Fable Hart family, our pride and joys in Alberta. If you don't know who the Hart family are, research them, man. They're, if you don't know the Hart family, you don't know Alberta wrestling. They're the greatest thing in Alberta wrestling since sliced bread. All from uh, the seed of Stu Hart and his vision and, and the dungeon he created and how he trained all these great wrestlers for so many years and ran the great promotion Stampede Wrestling as I was growing up. and Yeah. And, of course, that's where uh, Gamma Singh is, uh, was from the uh, the uncle of, of Jinder Mahal, which we'll be talking about shortly. But anyways, uh, the welcoming committee, Natalia Neidhart and Tamina Snuka, the daughter of the recently deceased uh, Jimmy Superfly Snuka, and uh, who's back, finally back in action. I guess back up and out about since her, her dad's death. And Carmella, the princess of Staten Island, of course, with her boo... James Ellsworth, who obviously it's her sidekick, her her boy toy, her guy to use, whatever you want to call him. <laughs> He's there for comedy anyways. So yes, we have uh, Naomi, Becky Lynch, and Charlotte versus Natalia Neidhart, Tamina Snuka, and Carmella, the welcoming committee. And I don't know. I, I can't see why Naomi, Becky Lynch, and Charlotte wouldn't win this match, especially being the SmackDown Live Women's Champion. And, you know, of course, sorry to the Calgary fans that love Natalia Neidhart. Really, her side doesn't really have a lot to, to again, uh, up against these two. I mean, or these three. I mean, Naomi, Becky Lynch, and Charlotte have both been women, are all been women's champions. Becky Lynch only one time. The other two have been two-time women's champions. So, I mean, really, what? why should Natalia, Tamina Snuka, and Carmella beat them? Uh except to create heat, maybe. So really, I, I don't see this being any different than any other uh, match that could be on the pre-show. I see Naomi, Becky Lynch, and Charlotte coming out victorious here. Just a chance to showcase the women a little bit in a card that really didn't have much for them. So, Anyways, after that, we have the newly announced match and newly planned match from SmackDown Live this week. Luke Harper versus the newly creepy Eric Rowan. Creepy in a good way, though, because... He's kind of entertaining. I was got to see him on Talking Smack tonight with all his different sheep's masks in a bag. 
And this should be interesting, and I'm picking Eric Rowan to win, so I think they're building something with Eric Rowan here. I don't know what, but it intrigues me. And, I mean, Luke Harper is old, reliable, fun to watch. The fans will be cheering for him, but really, I, I don't think they get much of having Luke Harper winning this match at this point. They haven't done anything for him. They haven't got any apparent set plans for him. So I, I see Eric Rowan winning this and creating heat, and, and whatever his, the plans for him will carry on. Uh, and then we have... Baron Corbin versus Sami Zayn from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. And uh, it's another match I think is fairly predictable. I, it's been a good feud. These guys have been feuding a lot for a while now. I just don't really see any reason for Sami Zayn to beat Baron Corbin. I mean, Baron Corbin's being used in many high card ways in, in SmackDown Live. In fact, tonight he, or on SmackDown Live this week, which happened to be tonight when I'm recording this, was um, he actually took on on the WWE champion, Randy Orton. So, I mean, if they're going to use him in that capacity, why would then they have him go on the pay-per-view and lose to Sami Zayn, who they just, they only really use him as a, really a glorified jobber to the stars. He's always entertaining, fun to watch, wins some matches when, when you know, when there's a storyline reason for it. But really, there doesn't seem to be any long-term storyline reason for Sami Zayn to win this match. And Baron Corbin, really, he should be the Intercontinental Champion, as far as I'm concerned. But, of course, that Intercontinental Champion was taken to SmackDown Live with Dean Ambrose. So maybe he'll be the next in line to challenge for the U.S. Championship. But anyways, Baron Corbin wins this match. I don't see any reason why it would be any other way. That's what it is. And then we have Dolph Ziggler against making his SmackDown Live debut, the amazing and epic Shinsuke Nakamura! Oh, man, this is... Something I'm looking forward to. Finally, the pay-per-view debut of Shinsuke Nakamura, the amazing star from NXT, a great NXT champion, great Japanese star. Oh, it's going to be great, and, and it's great of Dolph Ziggler to put him over, because that's exactly what's going to happen. Shinsuke Nakamura is going to win his debut match. He's going to win it in style. He'll be hitting his King Shasa for and, and, and pinning Dolph Ziggler for the three count. Dolph Ziggler is doing his duty being a good jobber at his age, and, and there's no reason for him to beat Shinsuke Nakamura, and, and really no chance, really no chance in hell of him beating him. <laughs> so yes, definitely that's going to Shinsuke Nakamura to win his debut match. And then finally, the main events of the night, we're going to have the U.S. title, Kevin Owens from Maryville, Quebec, Canada, the champion, the United States champion versus... The phenomenal AJ Styles. Because if you're not familiar with AJ Styles, he had a big match in Alberta, in, in Edmonton actually, in uh, the 13th uh, anniversary special of PWA against uh, the original Marky. I talk about it uh, every now and again on my uh, on my jobbing out uh, cruiserweight podcast. I'm a big fan of the original Marky. He's my bud. But yeah, they had a great match against Marky, and of course now he was. He's the big star in the WWE. He was WWE champion for a while there. And now he's getting a chance at the U.S. title held by Kevin Owens. This is a really tough one to predict because Kevin Owens, I mean, such a heel presence. You love seeing him as champion. And does AJ Styles belong being the U.S. champion only? I mean, he should really be in the, in the, uh, the WWE championship picture, which is kind of being, uh, you know, clouded now with the, uh, Jinder Mahal and everything. I don't know. I I think AJ Styles deserves to win, but I'm going to pick Kevin Owens to retain on some kind of shenanigans because I think AJ Styles has bigger, better things after his feud with Kevin Owens. I think this is really just a filler position for him, and I think Kevin Owens, you know, all great things are ahead for him. Uh, being the U.S. champion right now is exactly what he needs to prove he can take the U.S. championship and, and just continue to to elevate it and give it meaning and just be the great champion he was back, like he was back when he was the NXT champion for so long. See, so yeah, I'm going to pick uh, pick Kevin Owens to win with some form of shenanigans. I don't think it'll be a clean victory, although he might he might pin him for the three count. Although I think it's more likely it'll be something a little more unclean than that. But yeah, Kevin Owens retaining the title one way or another. And then of course the SmackDown Tag Team Champions finally are getting a chance to see SmackDown Tag Team Champions, which were really kind of ignored in, at WrestleMania was, you know, sadly. We have the Usos, the champions versus Breezongo, a.k.a. the Fashion Police. 
Tyler Breeze and Fondango, and I'm so glad to see uh, Tyler Breeze getting a shot at you know at a, at a title like this, even if it is with uh, you know with Fondango, the old veteran. Tyler Breeze is always one of my favorites from NXT. I mean, yes, he's probably never going to be your mainstream world champion kind of wrestler, but he's so entertaining, and it's so good to have him get a chance at, at a title like this with uh, with Fondango. Are they going to beat the Usos? No, I'm afraid not. The Usos are still as good as anything in the SmackDown Live Tag Team Division. There isn't a lot of good competition for them. The Usos will retain. Um, it'll be a good match. I'm sure Breezango will have their moments. And I mean, maybe it won't even be a, be a clean victory, but uh, really, I, I can't see uh, Tyler Breeze and Fondango winning with any kind of shenanigans. I, I think the Usos win this match. Probably clean. And, of course, they're going to win another. They will retain the uh, the SmackDown Live Tag Team Championship. So far, we have no... I'm not predicting any title changes, except for the uh, the in, in NXT TakeOver, the UK uh, Championship. I, I don't know if there's a need for a tag, for a, uh, tag team change here, uh, or sorry, a title change at this pay-per-view. All the titles are pretty much held by pretty good people, and, yeah, I don't think we need any title changes uh and of course, I, I kind of given away my prediction for the final one, which uh, which I shouldn't, because I'm uh, being an Alberta fan. I'm my my heart's not it's not really where my head is. Finally, the main event to the WWE Championship: Randy Orton versus Calgary's own Alberta zone Jinder Mahal, the Maharaja. And I'm sure he's going to have in his corner, which I just learned are from Vancouver. The Sing Boys, a.k.a. the ba- uh, formerly known as, anyways, the Bollywood Boys, or as I said, apparently from ba- Vancouver, reviving the great Sing faction from the great Gamma Sing and the Sing Sing Boys back in the old days of Stampede when I was growing up. Stampede Wrestling from Calgary. Yeah, it's great. I'm so glad to see Jinder Mahal get this uh, this opportunity. I'm sure if you've watched my uh, Jotting Out Cruiserweight podcast, you'll know I'm big on Jinder Mahal and getting this opportunity. He looks great. He's acting great. He's performing great. I would love to see him win the WWE Championship and bring it on tour to the India shows and trying to build the brand in India. I don't know if it's going to happen. Uh, Randy Orton, it's a good champion. You've seen him playing on SmackDown Live. The fans were so behind him. And, of course, Jinder Mahal is a heck of a heel. He's not going to have the fans behind him, except maybe us here in, in Alberta being a sentimental favorite. I don't know if it's if it's in the cards for him to win the title. I'd love to see it happen. I think that would be great for WWE to promote in India. I'm just not going to hold my breath. I think Randy Orton retains one way or another here. Jinder Mahal will have all kinds of shenanigans. It's going to be an exciting, great match. I think in the end, Randy Orton hits an RKO out of nowhere, gets the three count, and beats Jinder Mahal to retain the WWE Championship and moves on probably to face, well, I think the, the next opponent should be Shinsuke Nakamura, but of course there's still debate on that, who it'll be. Um, some people say it should be AJ Styles, but I think Shinsuke Nakamura would be an amazing champion for WWE right now, but uh, he's still new, and some might argue it's too soon for him. It'll wear his popularity out too soon. People don't know him very well yet, but I think he'd be a great champion. I could see that happening at SummerSlam, but either way... I don't think Jinder Mahal wins this, or if he does, that would be great. I mean, maybe hold it till SummerSlam, and he could be the one to face uh, Shinsuke Nakamura or, or even AJ Styles. But I said, I'm not going to hold my breath. I'm picking Randy Orton to win this this uh, match, retain the title. So anyways, to recap my predictions from NXT TakeOver, I have, uh, if it ha- the match happens, Drew McIntyre over Cassius Ono. I have uh, Pete Dunne winning the UK Championship from Tyler Bate. I have the Authors of Pain retaining the uh, tag, NXT Tag Team Championship versus DIY, Gargano and Ciampa. I have Asuka retaining the Women's Championship versus Ruby Riot and Nikki Cross. I have Bobby Roode retaining the NXT Championship versus Hideo Itami in glorious fashion. And of course, on the uh, Backlash pay-per-view, I have the Perfect Ten, Ty Dillinger beating Aiden English in a relatively... Squash match, base kind of match. I have the baby faces, Naomi, Becky Lynch, and Charlotte, beating the welcome committee, Natalia Neidhart, Tamina Snuka, and Carmella. I have Luke Harper and, uh, sorry, Eric Rowan beating Luke Harper. 
in a, you know, where's the battle of the former uh, Wyatt family henchmen. I have Barry, Baron Corbin getting a big victory over Sami Zayn, a much needed victory. I have Shinsuke Nakamura winning his debut match versus Dolph Ziggler. Did you know I was a Shinsuke Nakamura fan? <laughs> and I have uh, Kevin Owens retaining the United States Championship versus the phenomenal AJ Styles in whatever fashion he, he can. I have the Usos retaining the Tag Team Championships, probably with a pinfall victory over Brizongo, the Fashion Police, Tyler Breeze, and Fondango. And finally, I have Randy Orton retaining the WWE Championship versus Alberta's own Jinder Mahal in a match with loads of shenanigans and excitement and all kinds of craziness. But in the end, I have a Randy Orton with an RKO out of nowhere getting the pinfall over Jinder Mahal and going on as WWE Champion. So anyways, that is all for my predictions. That is all for the, for the big weekend of action with the Backlash pay-per-view, the SmackDown live exclusive, Blue Brand, with loaded with the, some of the best Alberta talent on it right now. Should be great. I hope you guys will uh, be watching on the WWE Network. I hope you're subscribed, but watch it legally. You know, I'm not a fan of, uh, of illegal stealing of television and illegal streaming. So anyways, I'm going to wrap this up and do my, uh, my little bit of uh, branding, if you will. First off, I'm Danimal Daniel Jobber. You can follow me on Twitter at Daniel Jobber. And, of course, you can follow me on Instagram under Danimal Daniel Jobber, all lowercase letters. Of course, all of my, my Danimal Daniel Jobber on Twitter is a capital D, capital J. And with Danimal Daniel Jobber on Instagram, all lowercase letters. And, of course, you can uh, check me out on my awesome website, DanimalDanielJobber.ca, where I have all my fun stuff, my shenanigans, my awesome cruiserweight power rankings, which are very popular. And just lots of other stuff. My music page where you can hear some of my great karaoke music I like to sing and record. And, of course, if you really want to email me, you can email me at uh, danieljobber at gmail.com. Although I'd much prefer if you go to my website, danieljobber.ca, and sign up for Discus. Or if you don't already have Discus, Discus, Discus. At the bottom of most of my pages, you can leave me a comment on Discus. And I hope you do. Love when you talk to me. Leave me comments. Let me know what you think of my website. Love to know you were there. It's almost like a guest list as well as a uh, chance for you to say whatever you want to say about my uh, my content, my podcast, whatever you want to talk about. So anyways, that's my that's who I am. Once again, I am, uh, of course, proud to be the Alberta area's own Danimal, Daniel Jobber, the D-Job. And I am proud to be part of the Ebony Sports Podcast Network. The awesome network that uh, is run by Mike the Ref. And, of course, you can check out Mike the Ref's main show is The Blown Call, where he does his uh, his big content. And he also has a shorter show he does every now and again called Quick Calls. Of course, we also feature the CWC Evolution and the RCW Breakout shows, uh, which is, of course, Mike the Ref at Commentary, doing some of the great Alberta wrestling content that we uh, get to see live if you live in the Alberta area and should check out because it's, it's always awesome. And of course, if you can't, or even if you do, check it out as well on the Evan Sports Podcast Network on the YouTube channel where you get the video content like that. And check out Mike uh, Beth's awesome commentary. And of course, the Sounds of Struggle podcast featuring Chris Parrish and Maniac. Move with them, just move with them. The guys with the chemistry, the knowledge of sports. They talk about everything sports and wrestling related. They make you laugh, they make you cry, they make you smile, they make you glad you're watching the Edmonton Sports Podcast Network. When you realize how awesome it all is, make sure you go to whatamaneuver.net and buy merchandise, buy t-shirts, got baby onesies, they got toddler t-shirts, you name it, they've got all kinds of great stuff and, and, and of course we feature, uh, several of the t-shirts from, from, uh, Maniac and Chris Parrish of the, of the, the um, Sound of Struggle podcast. And, well, I'm going to spill the beans a little bit. Coming soon, in the next week, to, hard to say, the official Danimal Daniel Jobber t-shirt on whatamaneuver.net. I'm excited about that, man. It's going to be great. I'm officially going to be a t-shirt. The first ever Danimal Daniel Jobber t-shirt. I'll let you know when it uh, when it's officially there and ready for order. I'll be the first one in line to order one, of course, and I'll be able to show it off. 
Anyways, we are the Edmonton Sports Podcast Network, the amazing, the great, the legendary, great content for the Edmonton area. Make sure you check us out, embrace us, and we are, of course, Edmonton and Alberta Zone, as I am. The Evidence Sports Podcast Network. What more can I say about them? So anyways, I'm going to wrap it up. You enjoy the great wrestling content this weekend with uh, NXT TakeOver Chicago and Backlash, also from Chicago. Should be some amazing wrestling. You guys have a wonderful night and a wonderful weekend. Jobber out! Time to do the job! Behold the jobber. Daniel, Daniel, Jobber. <laughs>